Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are back with another RIS version 0.6 roster preview. And we are finally at the end. We are at the Bosporan roster, and that marks the end of our roster previews for version 0.6. But firstly, before we get going, guys, we're on the road to 3,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, what I'm going to do is put you into this Greek Slinger unit and use you as a meat shield against cataphracts. But before we get going, guys, of course, we've got to hear the history of the roster, this time courtesy of Joralaf. Thank you very much to the mod team once again for these great historic summaries. The Bosporan Kingdom was centered on the Chimerian Bosporus, the modern-day Kerch Strait, and dominated the area for several centuries. The distinction between Scythian and Greek was blurrier here than anywhere else, and many tales of mixed unions and offspring are as common as those of conflict. The ruling Spartacids are sometimes thought to have been Thracian in origin, possibly linked to Odrysian royalty, though some believe them to have been Helleno Scythians instead. Regardless of their origins, they quickly intermarried with nearby Moetian tribes to secure strong alliances. Based in Panticapion, by the 4th century BCE, the kingdom had extended its reach to Theodosia in the west and Georgripia in the east, reaching across both sides of the Bosporus. These borders of which remained mostly stable until the Scythian revolts in the 100s BCE that led to the ceding of the kingdom of Mithridates VI of Pontus and his dynasty. And their fortunes were thus tied to the many wars the new rulers were embroiled in. Well, very nice indeed. I love that. And do you know what? I'm incredibly impressed that I said Panticapion really quickly and that was the first take <laughs> little behind the scenes for you guys normally when i read these histories out it doesn't take one take <laughs> mainly because of pronunciation mainly but let me just explain what we are here and why we have split the rosters so we have the remastered roster over here, which is the Greek Hellenic units. But we also have the older, unremastered units that come from Roma Serectum over here. And these guys are going to get remastered when the nomadic tribes all get remastered themselves. And then we've got the AOR units over there. The reason why they haven't remastered these guys is, of course, because they're focusing on the Greek world. And it's a lot easier remastering Greek unit after Greek unit rather than doing some Greek units, and then having to research a completely different and new culture and find out how they, uh, you know, how they were dressed, what armor they wore, and all that sort of thing, uh, before then having to then move on to another Greek unit. So, um, you know, I think it's a really sensible way of doing it. And we will come back to the Bosporans, guys, and show all these guys off when we get to that point. But without further ado, let's have a look at what we have here. So... Let's talk about the Greek Slingers. Here they are. Let's talk about the Greek Archers. Here they are. <laughs> Let's talk about the Akontistai. Here they are. Let's talk about the Greek Peltasts. Here they are. <laughs> no, I'm joking, guys. Let's, uh, yeah. We've seen the Greek Slingers and the Greek Archers many times before. Of course we know. Not the greatest units, not going to do amazing in the battle. The archers, of course, are a little bit better, and we've talked about that many, many times. Total defense of 9, a missile attack of 6, compared to the 4 and the 7 for the slingers. So, you know, in most situations, I'm going to take the archers, unless the slingers, you know, for garrison reasons, you want to really min-max that economy and have these guys in garrisoning rather than the Greek archers. But then again, they only have 80 troops, so what you want to do is probably garrison with a unit that's got a few more, something like the Bosporan Infantry. But yeah, Greek Archer's going to do fine. They do either do a lot of damage in battle if it's an extended battle. If it's a short battle, these guys aren't going to do a lot. But they're vitally important for siege, uh, for sieges, for both offensive and defensive sieges. So I still take Archers in my armies, guys. Even though I know, you know, Greek Archers aren't exactly the strongest... I still take them in my armies. For evidence of that, you can check out the Seleucid campaign down in the description below. 
So the Acontistae. We've seen these guys many times before. But I don't think we've actually seen this colour on them. It's like a deep purpley brown. A very interesting colour. Really nice. Goes with the Bosporan theme. But these guys, of course, aren't the greatest. They're a javelin unit. But nine missile attack is nothing to sniff at. A really nice bit of missile attack. 12 total defence as well. Not fantastic. Only one armour. So they're going to die to missiles just as quickly, uh, you know, as basically babies. But, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of a good analogy there. <laughs> because I'm dumb, guys. Because I'm very dumb. But anyway, Akontistai, we've seen them many times before. And they're not fantastic, but they are fine. But really, if you want a javelin unit, we're going to go for these Greek Peltast Boyos. Normally. But there might be something that changes your mind in a second. These guys, 12 morale, 10 melee attack, and 23 defense, with a missile attack of 9 again. So just a more defensible, uh, got a bit more morale, a bit more melee attack than the Akontistai. And we've seen these guys actually hold off Epilectoi long enough for cavalry to get there and save the day. So these guys are no, you know, absolute, they're not absolute slouches in melee. And that was on hard difficulty, by the way. That wasn't on easy difficulty or anything. They held the Epilectoi off for quite a while. I can't remember what roster that was on. Potentially, it was on the one before the Bithynians, but I'm not exactly sure. But yeah, they're a decent unit. But we do have the option over here of getting the Thracian Peltas. Now, we've seen these boys before in the Adrician and the um, Bithynian unit roster. And I just love the capes. They just look fantastic, don't they? I love the patterns on these boys. And once again, they look glorious in the Bosporan uh, colours. But what we're looking at here, what the real importance is here, is that they have an armor-piercing secondary weapon. Which means that their melee attack is armor-piercing, I believe. Uh, for a missile unit. That should be the secondary weapon. So that should be armor piercing on that missile, uh, on that melee attack. Which is very, very, very nice, guys. In indeed. They are going to be shredding people left, right, and center. 12 melee attack is decent as well. But armor piercing 12 melee attack is very nice indeed. 13 morale. Only 18 defense. Only 5 defense against missiles. So they're not going to do well against missiles. But if you get these in melee, they're going to last quite a while, guys. They're going to last quite a while. So a really nice uh, addition to this roster, the Thracian Peltas. So let's come across and let's have a look at one of the non-remastered units that you're going to have access to. Of course, you can tell the big difference between the remastered and the non-remastered units. And it's actually quite a good thing bringing this roster to you guys because you can really tell the level of detail and, you know... The unit variation and just the texture quality of the new remastered units versus the old units. It really does show. Uh, so here, the Scythian Royal Infantry. And oh my days. <laughs> These guys are redonkulously good. 18 morale. 11 melee attack. 32 defense. That's pretty much the same defense as a Hoplite unit. 26 defense skill. So only 6 armor. So they will die to missiles. That is their real weakness. But 26 defense skill is very, very strong. And 13, yes, 13 missile attack. That is equivalent to most really good javelin shock infantry units with arrows. <laughs> and of course, they have long range missiles of 160 meters as well. A very nice unit indeed. If you can get these guys, get them. Because they are going to be so, so strong. So, so strong. And do a lot of damage. Whether in melee or not in the game. So, let's move on to the melee units. The melee boyos. We have the Bosporan Hoplites and the Bosporan Machoroi. Mach... <laughs> Machoroi Foroi over there. And let's have a look. And then again, just compare the textures... And the look of these guys and the variation compared to, you know, some of the old remastered units. You can really see the amount of work that goes into creating these units. And all the unit variation. I think that's 
one of the major amazing things about this mod. Just the unit variation. If we look down here, all the different varieties of helms, plumes, that sort of thing, shields, looks of each person. It really is unique and, and really shows a unique, um, you know, every battlefield is unique is what I'm trying to say. Because of the different variations and makeups of each unit. I think it's glorious, honestly. Absolutely glorious. But we have a Bosper and a Hoplite. Very nice. 38 defense, 13 morale, and 13 melee attack. Very similar to most other Hoplite units. So, yeah, pretty much the same as most other Hoplite. So, a standard Hoplite unit. Not going to do well late game, but early game it's going to be your... Your cruncher and muncher, I'm going to call them. The cruncher and muncher. The person that's going to do all the heavy lifting in your armies are these boys. So yeah, nice early game unit and a standard hoplite. Looking very cool indeed. But let's have a look at the Bosporan Machiro... Machiro Foroy! There we are. <laughs> Way! He said it right. Fantastic. Um, I'm even pleased with myself, you know. <laughs> And these guys are a really, really good unit. And look at them. We've not seen this design before at all. Very nice. Absolutely lovely. And look at that little belt there. That'd go for $1,000 in Gucci nowadays, guys. These guys were ahead of the curve, you know. Has anyone got any of these lying around I could sell for them? You know, I'll take a bit of a commission off the top. But anyway, um... Very cool indeed. And I love this uh, this this scaled armor as well. Uh, this sort of chainmail-esque uh, linothorax over here is really cool. Really cool. And, and we did have that in the Hoplites as well. I should have said about it. Really cool. We've not seen that style of armor at all. And then we've got, you know, the this style, which is brand new as well. All the unique shields once again. Very cool indeed. And mean looking unit, isn't it? Do we have plumage? Ah, yes, quite a lot of plumage. Do we have capage? Quite a lot of capage. So, you know, this is going to be a pretty elite unit. Although, we've got plumage and capage here. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> that breaks my rules straight away. But anyway, 43 defense. Very nice indeed. 29 defense skill. 14 defense against missiles. Very cool indeed. 20 morale. Very strong. That's better than some general units. And a melee attack of 13. But do remember that that is a melee attack with a sword. So it's going to do better than, say, the Hoplite unit that has 13 with a spear. Uh, the melee attack with a sword against the Spearman unit is going to just do better in general. So better unit than the Hoplites. Very nice defense. Going to be sort of your elite units later on. And they look awesome as well, which really does help. So let's have a look at some of the non-remastered units. Not the Bosporan Heavy Infantry, not them first. Go for the Bosporan Infantry first. And these guys are kind of your basement level unit. 13 morale, 10 melee attack, and 29 defense. So just a worse version of the Hoplites. Uh, and again, we can just tell the difference. It really does. I really do like, you know, that we've got to show this. Because it really does elevate... The quality of the units that have been made here. It really does show how good these units look. Remember, this engine is so old, guys, as well. And they're making units that look like this. It is just obscene. But anyway, Bosporan Infantry, not the greatest. And they're probably a basement level unit. Probably a good unit for garrisoning, but not much else. Only 7 defense against missiles. 22 defense skills, not actually that bad. Um, but they're just not quite as good as the Hoplites. Then we have the Sindian Infantry over here. They look like they have bows, bro. But there's no missile attack. That's very weird. But anyway, uh, 16 morale, 12 melee attack, and 39 defense. So some pretty nice defense, pretty nice morale, and really good melee attack. Um, well, not really good. Decent melee attack. So quite a good defensive unit i'm gonna say with these guys strong defensive spearmen really cool and we've not really seen that many really strong defensive spearmen apart from the hypastists among the greek rosters um 
So that's going to do really well in... Really, really, really well. Really well in defense. Then we've also got the Bosporan Heavy Infantry. And these boys are truly elite. 47 defense. 10 armor. 9 shield and 28 defense skill. Woohoo! Very nice. That is very similar to a Cataphract level of defense. In fact, it probably is the same as a Cataphract level of defense. Uh, 18 morale, 13 melee attack. They're only spearmen again, so they're not going to be a great shock infantry. But 16 missile attack for two javis as well. So that's your bit of shock, and then they can charge the enemy. Or they're just going to be better in defense. They're going to be a really strong defensive spear unit. Just a better version of the Sindian infantry. Really cool indeed. So let's take a look at the remastered cavalry. And we've got some Thoroporoi cavalry over here. Everyone knows missile cavalry are my favorite cavalry of them all. I absolutely love them. Um, no sarcasm intended there at all. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> 13 morale, 10 melee attack, 9 missile attack with your 7 javis, and a total defense of 17. And I really do like the look of these boys. You know, not a lot of heavy armor. But quite a bit of, you know, robage and a bit of capage going on as well, of course. And we got the nice little clasp up there. Oh, hello. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> looking cool. And I really like that shield. That shield in particular looks really cool to me. I do really like that. Uh, but yeah, standard javelin cavalry. Better than the Prodromoy, but not fantastic. And they're going to do fine uh, if you want javelin cavalry. So then we've got the uh, Paflagionian Cavalry. Paflagionian. Wait, no. Paflagonian. Uh, Paflagonian. There we are. I can say things. Uh, and these guys, kind of almost a Thracian design again. Scythian kind of design. Looking quite cool. Indeed, with their little hats on. Very nice. And their pajamas. Their, their nightgowns coming out. Like Ebenezer Scrooge. Just a younger version of Scrooge. Maybe that's why he's so Scroogey. Because he's seen things, man. He's been there. You don't know, man. You weren't there. That's Scrooge. <laughs> Modern day Scrooge. Uh, but anyway, 9 morale, 9 melee attack, 9 missile attack, and total defense of 14. So just a bit of a worse version of the old Thoroporoi cavalry. And I like the little difference in shields. We've not really seen these tiny little... Buckler, almost Buckler-esque shields here. Very cool, with the scales on. Again, why do they need to put that in? Like, it, it, they don't need to put this level of detail in. You're not going to see it when you're out here. But they do anyway, because they care so much about it. It's crazy. Very nice indeed. Cool. So let's move on to the non-remastered cavalry. And, of course, we've got the Bosporan cavalry. Cavalry over here, and they are very armored, as you can tell. 31 defense, 10 armor, 16 defense skill, and 5 shield with a charge of 43. <laughs> yes. 18 morale, 15 melee attack, and 14 alt attack. Of course, we all know what cataphracts are like. These are kind of like a demi cataphract with the uh, bit of front armor on. Not full cataphract, but they're just, they're strong, aren't they? They're really strong. They're going to smash a Zista 4 our unit into smithereens. Um, and laugh over the corpses because they're so well armored. So pretty nice unit, I've got to say. Very nice heavy cavalry unit. And we've got the Tanaden Cataphract. And these guys, not quite as much defense. And again, you can see that the horses aren't actually armored. Um, but they frighten nearby enemy infantry. And they've got 19 morale guys. 19. 16 melee attack, 15 alt attack, and 51 charge. Goes to say that they've got a very nice spear. Nice and long. <laughs> right, Sindian cavalry. 13 morale. Very cool indeed. Yes, hello. Um, 11 melee attack, 9 missile attack, and total defense of 19. So just probably a bit of a better version of the Theroporoi. Yeah, just a little bit of a better version of the Theroporoi. And I can't wait for these guys to get remastered because they are going to look so cool when they do. 
But let's just talk about the AOR units. You've got a few AOR units on offer. We've got the Mercenary Scythian Archers. Uh, they're a long-range archer that's just a bit better than the Greek archer. They've got nine missile attack rather than six, but their morale and their defense is pretty much on the same level. So just a bit of a better version of the Greek archers there. Very nice. Uh, and then we've got the Scythian Cataphracts over here. Oh, and these guys are proper Cataphracts. Look at them. They've even got shields to protect their shoulders. <laughs> Yes, 20 morale, 15 melee attack, and 55 charge, and they frighten nearby enemies, and they have horns on their horses. I don't know how they breed their horses to have horns on them, but they're doing something right. Very nice indeed, that unit. That's going to be very strong for you all game. We've also got a couple of horse archer units, which is very nice to see in a Hellenic faction. Um, it doesn't really matter any of the other stats uh, in Horse Archers apart from their missile attack and their range. So 8 missile attack and 130 range. Defense of 13, only 3 defense against missiles. So, you know, against other Horse Archers they might fall quite quickly. Uh, but 13 morale as well is fine. So they're going to stay in the fight for quite a while. We all know how OP Horse Archers are. And they just always will be because they should be. Because they were OP in real life. So... <laughs> We've got the Scythian Noble Cavalry, 18 morale, 11 melee attack, and 10 missile attack, with a charge of 49, 25 defense, 11 armor, and defense skill of 14. Also, missile attack of 10. So these guys are basically your cataphract horse archers. Very cool. Indeed. Well, I hope you have enjoyed that little roster preview. Of course, the full roster's not going to be... Uh, shown until uh, until they've done the nomadic factions but yeah that is how the roster looks at the minute and some really really strong and cool units in there <laughs> very nice and i do like the look of most of the well all of them really cool so uh let's move our boys forward we don't have a lot of infantry but you do have some very elite infantry of course, the, the thing with the uh, the Bosporans that I quite like is the fact that it, you can really play, you know, almost a, a cavalry-based army with a Hellenic faction. And that, to me, is is awesome because I love cavalry-based armies. If you've seen my Parthia campaign in, in Rome, Total War uh, Vanilla, then you'll know that I, I love cavalry-based armies. Um, these boys... Let's get in there. What are you? Thracian Noble Cavalry. We've got to be careful because they do have a couple of units that will frighten. Like the nearby, uh, the Idrissian Royal Warriors will frighten people. But I'm hoping we can get our boys into the fight. And they will also frighten the enemy. Come on, boys. Get in there. That's just Thracian Light Lancers. Come on. We've got to win with our Cataphract, surely. Come on, the boys. Get there. Oh, let's, uh, let's get into the Thracian Light Lancers now if we can. And then you boys get straight across. I'm not bothered about my uh, sort of missile troops. They've gone straight in the Bosporan infantry. What are they? Oh, they're only Light Lancers. That is absolutely fine. What are you? Well, we don't want the Bastanian infantry killing our cavalry, do we? It's not ideal. <laughs> These guys are great in melee. I don't know why they're they're scared. Right, let's go kill them. You guys come out. I think we'll be fine. We're just going to be careful with the uh, Romphophoroi because they do scare nearby infantry. We're armor-piercing as well, which is always great to see. Oh, this is a fast and furious battle, you know. A bit too fast and a bit too furious. Kill them. How did they get around there? That's that's very weird. <laughs> uh, we should get in the back of there. And we should kill the Romphi 4. We should charge the Romphi 4 because they're not grading cavalry, if I'm not mistaken. Isn't that their weakness? Or am I completely wrong? I can't remember. Oh, this Thracian Noble Cavalry is taking a battering. But we are also taking a bit of a battering with our boys down here as well. Where's our cavalry gone? Wait, where are you, cavalry? Wait, what? What are you doing? 
What are you? You're the cataphracts. I mean, just run through the Bastardian infantry. That's surely going to be possible. Kill that noble cavalry, please. Now, you guys get your... I'm going to show you the, the power of these guys with their armor piercing when we get into the back of the Adrissian Royal Warriors. Come on, guys. Be quick, for God's sake. You do like to be a bit of a slug sometimes, don't you? Right, then. Let's get in there. Charge them. And they're going to just do some good damage. You know, when, when, when you, you think that they're a, the Peltast unit, they will do some good damage. You can see that already. It's already shaken them because they're, you know, surrounded. But anyway, uh, you guys haven't even got in the battle yet. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, right, horse archers, come forward. And then cataphracts. Time for you to eat some slingers for breakfast. Nom, nom, nom. Right, you guys come forward. You guys are already there. Oh, dearie me. Routus Maximus, I think we can call that. Uh, cataphract time again. Let's go. Charge. Oh, the, is, there, is there anything more glorious than a cataphract charge? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Not much, I've got to say. Probably the old guard. You know, the French old guard marching uh, against the cannon. I'd probably say that's more glorious. But <laughs> only slightly. Only slightly. Charge of a cataphract is, in fact, very, very glorious. Um, what else have we got down here? Kill them. How are they still alive? Yeah, look at these Idrissian royal warriors, you know. Thracians have lost 20 men, but they've, you know, there's a lot of these Idrissian royal warriors that have been killed. Obviously, not all by the, the, the Thracians, but... Go, go, go. What have we got left then? No, me general. Me poor general. But anyway. Alright. Come forward again. Everyone just kill these guys. The last guys, I think they are, aren't they? The more Adrissian Rover. I did pack out their uh, roster because we had 20 units. So I filled their roster to full 20. That was a messy battle, but. Oh, we did a lot more damage than them. Very nice indeed. Well, guys, let me know your favorite unit down below, or your favorite of the remastered units. Uh, and let me know uh, that you're enjoying these videos by smashing that like button and subscribing. Because remember, if you don't subscribe, I'm going to make you into a Greek slinger and use you as a meat shield against a cataphract. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you on the next video.